Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at magnetic declination as is important to flying in DCS world or any simulator or flying in the real world for that matter. It's something that's caused me a massive amount of confusion until I finally understood it and now everything just makes sense and I'm going to pass it on to you guys. So magnetic declination also known as magnetic variation also known as magnetic deviation I call it magnetic deviation is the angle on the horizontal plane between magnetic north the direction the north end of a magnetized compass needle points corresponding to the direction of the earth's magnetic field lines and true north the direction along a meridian towards the geographical north pole so let's do that again it's the angle between magnetic north and true north this angle varies depending on position on the earth's surface and changes over time so what does this mean? It means that there are two different norths, two different ways of measuring north, and they are completely different. One north, known as the true north, and it has the word true because it is the actual true north, is meridian-based, geographical-based. So let's go and find one here. Here is the Earth. You all know about time zones. There's GMT there. You see it goes through Greenwich there. These are called meridian lines. These go, if you like, vertical along the surface and they are absolutely true they will never change they'll always be the same unless the earth suddenly changes its shape which is not very likely if you are here somewhere there in africa true north will always be perfectly up this line to the very north pole and therefore south to the very south pole if you are in that same place and you get your compass out including the compasses in our aircraft and that our aircraft are absolutely and completely based on and you point it towards magnetic north it will not point towards the north pole that's something very important to understand it will point towards magnetic north which is simply not the north pole it's very unlikely it's the north pole it'll be roughly upwards in that direction somewhere but it could be off there it could be off there it could be off there, it could be off there. If you are going to use magnetic north, you must understand that it is not the same as geographic north, and you must therefore understand magnetic deviation declination and make the necessary adjustments. So why then is magnetic north not correct? Why is it not the true north? Well, it's because the magnetic field of the Earth is not uniform, it's not perfect, and it's always changing. It's almost as if it's alive. If we went down here, you can see, I mean, I don't really understand this. You, you probably realise it's just something I've had to learn the basics of. I mean, look at this here. It's This is a mapping of 1590 to 1990. So that's 400 years. And look how the different magnetic lines have changed and are always changing. The simple fact is that magnetic north does not point north. It changes very on time and it changes where you are on the earth so now that we understand that we have to ask ourselves why is this so important well the important thing is that all of our aircraft in dcs are simply based on magnetic north and so you can get in your i don't know f5 get in your f14 and you can fly at you know 360 bearing or, or heading or 000 and you think you're going north but you're actually not you're going true north plus or minus the magnetic declination of where you are in the world at that point in history. I know it's weird, but that's how it is. So we can simplify that. We've got four terrains, four places on Earth that DCS covers. So we can simplify it. And in terms of time, it's just now it's 2019. So we can tell Caucasus is about minus six degrees declination. Nevada is about minus 12 degrees declination. Normandy plus about 1940, plus about one degree. Persian Gulf plus, uh, sorry, minus about two degrees. So why is it about and not equals? These maps cover vast swathes of area, 400, 500, 600 plus miles. So even within the DCS maps, the magnetic declination will change. For instance, in Persian Gulf, it's not just minus two uniformly all over Persian Gulf. It might be over here, it might be minus 2.1. Over here, it might be minus 1.85. It's an average for that bit of terrain. And for the accuracy that we really care about, we can just about, just about get away with this. Even if we do just use these, there are still errors in it for those reasons that I said. That particular airbase that we're landing at Persian Gulf might be minus 1.85. It might not be minus 2. You'll never get it absolutely perfect. 
Some aircraft in DCS have EGI, Iggy. This combines GPS and INS, and therefore it's a bit smarter way of navigating. Uh, A10C, F16C, probably Hornet. I can't remember. I never truly learned the Hornet very well. And so if you have GPS, then you know exactly where you are in the world, or you can calibrate where you are in the world. So they can help out a bit, but still problems exist. Well, still this problem is relevant. So to summarize, we've talked about what magnetic declination is. We've talked about how it varies, but we've simplified it to how what it means to us in DCS world. The next thing we need to do is jump into DCS and to see why I'm telling you about this, why it actually makes a difference. And it does. It's really important you get your head around this, especially in Nevada. 12 degrees is amazing. Or even Caucasus. Six degrees is life and death in an IFR landing. Even two degrees will mess you up. So we'll jump in DCS. I don't have Nevada installed at the moment because it's so big and I really can't be bothered. So I think we'll go to just go to Caucasus and we'll do the minus six degrees. Stand by. Okay, we're in now. We're in our F-16 in the Caucasus. And I guess there's, there's two points I really want to make that are, I think are going to affect to so we're going to go to f10 map this is where a lot of the work is done i'm going to turn our map lines off because i think they're just going to cause even more confusion and the first thing i want us to do is to get on north this is from our iggy from our egi system that's a combined gps and ins system and you can see you've got the heading tape in the middle if you don't know what i'm looking at is that there very simple i'm just going to get, get on zero 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 that's going to be north stabilize there heading select isn't working at the moment so i'll just do it manually okay Nearest, damn it, we're on north there. I'm going to pause it there. I'm now going to get my line here that I can draw. I'm going to zoom in for extra super accuracy. I'm going to do it from there. And look at the heading at the top there. I'm going to go exactly north. So how about, you can see if I make that line perfectly straight. Well, nearest, damn it, straight. There we go. That is zero degrees. Okay, and we're going to follow that zero degrees in here. And we're going to follow perfectly along that line. So let's get that done. Zoom in so we get nice and accurate. And we're going to speed up time because modern generation don't like to wait. And I think that's enough data. Near enough, perfectly straight. Oh, and what a surprise, we've deviated. And that's because this line that I drew here on exactly zero there was a true heading. This F10 works on true heading. That is a true heading, or bearing, whatever you want to call it, of zero north if we click on our little guy here despite the fact it says zero in here and this will work for the same for all aircraft in dcs unless you've physically gone in and set the magnetic declination in the cockpit is a heading of zero zero six and that is our prox six degrees magnetic declination as we spoke about in the caucuses so he's not actually going up there he's actually going there the difference between magnetic and true heading so the implications of what i've shown you there are if you are being a gci in this f10 map which is a true map and you say hello cap in your f16 please go exactly zero zero three to get to gali or a refueling tanker or i don't know whatever a, a dogfight then i will line that up zero zero three there but I will actually be going on this map 009. So I'll actually be going that direction there. And I'll miss Garley by 4.7 miles. Now, that's not too bad. But if you were going over there, say, that's true north there. I wanted to get to uh, that uh, non-directional beacon there. And I actually went there. Then that is now an error of 22 miles so you can see start to see why this is so important i would miss that airfield or that ndb completely so for a gci or awax uh, commander whatever you want to call it to give this guy an actual heading that he can work on he has to actually take into account the magnetic declination he has to say to intercept this flank out that's up here at true heading north he has to tell cap here to go 354 minus six degrees now in reality you're never going to do that because the gci never or commander never wants to do that calculation in his, in his head and because it's only six degrees it doesn't really matter but that's a thing there will always be that error and especially in nevada remember minus 12 degrees if he tells him to go north to um, intercept the incursion he actually needs to send three four eight which in here is already like 17 miles only 70 miles away so it shows how important this is with ground control intercept and whatnot uh, i guess you guys are going to ask well the 
AI controlled AWAX, does that give me a magnetic heading to follow or a true? Honestly, I haven't got a clue. I would like to ask you guys that. Uh, and the second thing I want to show you is just as important. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to line up here with Copyletti. We're going to do a fake IFR landing. And it's incredibly important you get these IFR landings absolutely perfect, as you've seen in my videos and whatnot. So we're going to land on this guy here. Uh, it's Takan is uh, 67 X-ray KBL. And to align myself on a radial, I must know the exact heading of the runway. It's something I have to know. Without this, I can't do this IFR, fake IFR landing. So I'm going to I'm drawing a line there. And you see on the F10 menu, I've got zero seven zero so i'm going to align myself with zero seven zero for the radial intercept so let's go and get that sorted i'll just get a new plane it's going to be takan it's going to be that it's going to be down it's going to be six seven enter okay we've got the takan signal now that's got a flight instruments head down it's ifr so there's no point in looking out the window we're going to set this to takan button button we're gonna adjust we've got a bearing pointer there pointing to our tack and station i know it's not quite on the runway as wag says but it's near enough so we're now going to change our course this is what is going to set us on our radial so our course was uh, zero seven zero exactly so we've got to get that right now the idea is as you all know you all know if our landings we're going to get the course deviation marker here aligned with the course pointer here aligned with the bearing pointer here aligned with the 12 o'clock position that's what's going to get me in my radial and stop me from dying and pause let's turn stop align tiny bit right stop right there so you can see we're absolutely perfect there bearing pointer and the course pointer and the course deviation line are near as damn it pixel perfect to a 12 o'clock there. I'm just going to best level wings quickly. Okay, so we should be absolutely pixel perfect on that runway. And that, because we've got no visibility outside, is going to save our life. So we can see my guy here. He's got a true heading of uh, 076 now. And we all already know that's wrong because that should be 070. We can see his line of travel should be to the Takan station, which it is. So the bearing point is working. That's taking me to the station. But look, I'm on the wrong radial. If I draw that line through there, I'm six degrees out and in an IFR landing, that will kill me. So let's follow it through to the bitter end, shall we? Do our actual IFR landing. I know I'm way too high. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is proof of lateral concept here. Blah, blah, blah. In for our steep IFR dive here. Hope our QFE is not too wrong. Six miles. Nearly there. Slightly off marker here, to the left, five miles. Slightly off pointer still. Whoops, a little bit low there. Ha <laughs> ha, nearly, nearly got me. A little bit off pointer. Can't look out the window, no point looking out the window, it's IFR. One mile, slightly deviating. That's the outer marker, or the inner marker, probably the outer marker. Outer marker. And we are there if we look out the window now completely at the wrong angle you can see which simply wouldn't have been able to land that and imagine in nevada at minus 12 degrees would be further out to the side so that is the second reason why it is so important to understand these magnetic declinations i've shown how we can get over it in terms of the gti making compensation so all we do here in terms of this compensation is instead of taking a true heading of the runway like that, which is 070, we just take six off it. So we actually should have set our course line up for 064. Then we would have come in perfectly towards the Takan station, more importantly, perfectly on radial. Or another way around it is there are some of these modules have magnetic declination adjusters. I don't think the F16 has one question mark, correct me if I'm wrong. Usually on the right hand side of your aeroplane here, you'll have a panel back up here where you can actually adjust the magnetic declination so that the compass actually reads not the magnetic heading but the true heading. So that's a thing. Some do, some don't. And the other way is another way of measuring that uh, runway course would have been to go into your knee board and find your airbase. You can see your magnetic tracks in here. This is the knee board. This is right control and kilo. And then you can shift through it with the knee board left and right pages. And you can see here, whatever runway that is, 
Terps, wherever that is, aerodrome chart. This runway here, 04 right, is has a course track, 041 degrees on this runway here. Runway track magnetic. So he's already compensated for the minus six degrees declination on that runway there. So that would be a true measurable course of 047 if I went to the F10 menu. That's the end of the presentation. I hope that all makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions or corrections that need making. Go out and learn your magnetic declinations, learn how to adjust. Hope that was useful and see you later.